Hi, I'm Lynn Langett. Welcome to my Commit Yourself Learning GitHub series. I'm making this series because I'm a working developer and I've had a lot of people ask me questions about GitHub and they often start with, I know this is a dumb question, but... So I'm going to try to cover all those dumb questions. This is for absolute beginners. So even if you've been working with it for a little while, maybe you'll pick up something, but let me show you what I intend to talk about. So the first part today, I'm going to just introduce GitHub in case you've never heard of it before or never seen it. So if you're familiar with it and you just want to get started, you're going to want to go to the second part. So I'm going to talk about what's GitHub, who uses it, why you should use it, and when to use it. And I intend these to be really short, like five, 10 minutes. Then I'm going to go into how, when, and then conflict resolution. So just a very basic series on working with GitHub. I hope you enjoy it. So the first thing is, what is GitHub? And if you've never seen it before, I'll take you over to the website in just a second. It's an online source control. So you might not know what source control is, especially if you're a newer uh, programmer or developer. So you can see I have the sort of textbook definition here. Source control is a system to manage changes to sets of files, so code files. Changes are grouped and numbered as revisions, and revisions can be compared, restored, or merged. And you can use it just yourself, and that's the way I actually use GitHub more than anything. However, the idea is, because it's online, that you can collaborate with other people. So um, when you work with it, as you'll see in my series, you not only use the website, but you also use a local client. So you install a piece of software on your PC, your Mac, or Linux machine, and you interact with the central repository with your local client. You can use GitHub in the free way if your repositories or you know, sets of files are public, or you can use it uh, in a, a way that you pay for, and then you'll have private or hidden repositories. And usually I find that companies will use that. And to that end, who uses GitHub? Well, I find that it's mostly professional developers, but there's hobby, hobbyists, hobby coders, students, and novices there as well. So this you know, just reflects the general population. Also, increasingly, companies will use it, whether they're startups, whether they're companies that you know have offices all over the world, or huge corporations like Microsoft or Google, or really all the, all the major ones have repositories of sample code on GitHub. I want to call out a special note here. One of the reasons I'm actually making this series is I heard a statistic that really uh, was upsetting to me that only 2% of the contributions on GitHub were from women. And I, I don't know if that's true. I actually couldn't find the reference. But it doesn't seem like there's enough um, inclusion of, of newer people. And in, in many cases, that includes women. So that's why I called this Commit Yourself. So to um, show you a little bit about this, this is sort of interesting, I thought. I found this GitHub repository. So we can actually look at GitHub and we can look at getting more people to contribute. I thought it'd be sort of fun. So let me just go over here and go to this GitHub repository. And you can see this is the GitHub website and this is the name of the user and then this is the name of the repository. And then these are the files in the, the repository. So you can see they have various file names. And then there's information about this. You can see how many people are working on it. Got 130 different people working here how many releases, how many um, master sets or branches, how many changes, sets of changes have been made, 405. And this is kind of cool too. If you click right here, you can see the, code, the programming language that the repository is primarily written in. And you can see that the script's written in Python. And then there's this little friendly readme file here. And this is, uh, a, the, the context here is about the number of women in engineering. And um, they actually are putting a link here to uh, their um, summary information in the Google spreadsheet. So again, just kind of showing you, this is kind of interesting. I don't know how recent this is, but it's showing the percent of women engineers. And this is uh, some information about this spreadsheet. Looks like it's a, it uses a Python script, yeah, to um, pull some data out of a, a, a file. So in any case, um, that shows you an actual repository or a working area in GitHub, gives you something concrete to look at. So let me just go back and then we'll just do a little bit more looking at it here in a minute. So uh, when would you use GitHub? Well, as I just said, if you want to collaborate. Now I kind of, use, I use it, it's not really a kind of, I use it to actually store my code for my samples when I give public talks. Um, so I use it as a kind of a, um, like a Dropbox, but a little bit more intelligent of a Dropbox because people can pull my code down and work with it as we'll see in this series. 
If you want to share your software, um, I also use it to share the software for my nonprofit, which is Teaching Kids Programming, which I'll show you in this series. So we put all of our, our software there. And you'll hear people talk about open source software. And uh, we'll take a look at that as we go into this series too. You can learn something new. You can look for some interesting projects and look at them, read the code. And if you feel like you want to work on it, pull the code down, maybe suggest a change and then send it back up. And we'll learn the process of doing that in this series as well. You can build an online coding portfolio. More and more employers are looking to see if you have contributed to open source projects, even if you're, you know, have a regular nine to five programming job for a company, because it's, you know, it shows that you have initiative and you're curious and you're a learning person. And of course, it's really fun. So just to kind of get us started with the mechanics of it, you know, if you were um, going to get started, you'd got to the GitHub site and then you would sign up. In the next video, I'll actually show you very specifically how to do that. And then once you sign in, then you'll see your view of the world. So here's here's my view of the world and you have like a news feed basically of the, the people and the projects that you're interested in. So if I wanted to go to my own area, I would just click on myself here and you can see you can put information about yourself, whatever you want to put in there. So where you live, uh, contact information, uh, who you're following. And if you're working with any groups collaborating, you can associate with your groups. I, I work with my nonprofit here, Teaching Kids Programming, and also work with the Google Developer Experts, which is a, a, a group that I'm, I'm a part of. And then you can see inside of here, you've got um, the repositories or the, the groups of files or projects that you're working with. Um, and then um, that you have the repositories that you're an owner of here. So these are the various ones. And again, the next video, we'll be making all this stuff. And then you have your newsfeed, basically. And then down here, I, this is like their uh, report card, if you will. It shows how frequently you contribute to public repositories. If you pass your mouse over it, see I had a really active day there back in October. Um, and then if you scroll down, you can see how many contributions you have. And I haven't coded anything this week, so I'll be getting on it as I'm making this series. So anyway, um, hopefully at least I piqued your interest. Um, GitHub has a reputation for being intimidating and it's really not that hard and I hope to break it down in this series so that we can all commit ourselves. This is Lynn Langett.